Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as Arkanoa announced n a few weeks ago, and we've been hinting at for longer, uh, we've been looking into ways that we can support booting on UEFI hardware. And we have, um, in conjunction with a uh, partner developer, we've got a proof of concept that, yes, to demonstrate that we can do this, yes. Um, that's been in development for several months, and it's at a point now where it's, um, w well, we can demonstrate that, yes, we can boot OS2 on UEFI hardware. And if you're not sure what UEFI hardware is, um, that will be coming up uh, in a minute. So here it is. What is UEFI? It stands for Ex Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. And the short story is it's basically a replacement for BIOS. Um, so the UEFI, as uh, Roderick mentioned, has been a long time in coming. Uh, and it's essentially been this process of transitioning the PC hardware away from the traditional BIOS and VGA BIOS as well, um, sort of interfaces. Now, BIOS dates back to the DOS days, where it essentially provided all of the input-output um, support for DOS. And DOS, instead of having its own independent drivers for this, essentially just hooked into the BIOS for these functions. Uh, OS2 and most other operating systems up to a few years ago would use BIOS functions to get themselves booted, because obviously they haven't loaded their own kernel and drivers yet. So until that operating system was booted, they would use the BIOS to get you know, to be able to read the disk to load the operating system itself. But UEFI is a totally new system that replaces BIOS, and so the operating system needs to support that. And during this transition period, UEFI systems would still provide a compatibility support module, which is essentially uh, a BIOS, or a, at least a BIOS emulation layer, so that operating systems that expected to be able to use BIOS and didn't support pure UEFI would still be able to boot on this hardware. That's basically been the case up until now. However, we are now on the verge of step two here, in which Intel, which is the one that's driving these standards, essentially, well, there's a UEFI consortium, but it's essentially Intel that's kind of been driving the development of this. They've uh, announced that they are going to phase out this compatibility support module uh, by the beginning of next year, which means that they, the expectation is that all operating systems will by that time support booting off pure UEFI, and the BIOS will just disappear. Next slide, please. So um, where does ARCA OS fall here? Um, well, the good news is inst uh, this isn't going to be like flipping a switch. Um, Windows 7 and some other operating systems that still have a fairly large installed basis still need CSM, but they are, I suspect, going to push really hard to get manufacturers to stop including CSM, partly because Microsoft doesn't want people using Windows 7 anymore. <laughs> so it's kind of that, <laughs> yeah. Now, how about Arca OS? supporting UEFI. Well, ArcOS does not depend as extensively on the BIOS uh, as DOS did, for example. OS2, as I said, essentially uses the BIOS as a kind of a bootstrap to get itself booted. And there are certain drivers or certain cases where it has to use, or at least as a fallback, some BIOS support. But in, th in theory, um, if you can solve this issue of just booting, uh, in theory, you should be able to work around any remaining um, traces of, of BIOS interfaces in the operating system. And so part of this proof of concept has been demonstrating that we could do that, as well as, obviously, the problem of booting. So what are the main issues involved in getting ARCA OS to support uh, UEFI? Well, um, there are these two interfaces. And I hope you'll forgive me. I, uh, this is not my area of expertise. This is I essentially got this from the developer who's working on it. So I can't answer very technical questions about this. But uh, as I understand it, there are two main uh, interfaces uh, to the BIOS, these interrupts. Uh, interrupt 10, uh, which interfaces, I guess, with the VGA hardware. Um, that interface is going away, along with the rest of the BIOS, as is in 13. And that is uh, disk I.O. And OS2 normally uses, obviously, its own DASD drivers. Um, DMD, uh, I think it is, 
that, that do this particular component of it, um, to interface with this drivers. But again, during the boot phase, those drivers aren't loaded yet. And also, they do provide, there's an uh, i13 DASD driver, which I think basically, if you can't find any other driver that supports your hard disk, IBM originally provided that as a fallback. Uh, I don't think anybody should really be using it under any circumstances these days, but uh, who knows. Um, but anyway, these interfaces are going away, so we have to make sure that the system no longer depends on them. Next slide, please. So POC, proof of concept uh, of UEFI for Arca OS, is, remember this, it's a proof of concept. Uh, we have done this to demonstrate that we can do it. This is not in and of itself an official UEFI component in Arca OS, at least not yet. Um, some of these details are still a bit in, are still in progress. Some of them may may um, the details of it may shift slightly, but the proof of concept we have this capability now, um, where the initial loader we have a loader that can um, start up the the system. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So. so We've got BIOS calls that were originally used for ACPI uh, to load the ACPI tables. So um, I believe the new loader it kind of wed, uh, puts kind of a, a, an emulation layer in there or replaces it with just sort of a, a stub that's necessary to get this function loaded. And then uh, another kind of interface that this loader puts in to um, enable Visa support for generic drivers like Panorama. As I say, I'm sorry, I don't exactly know how this works, but the upshot is that ACPI.psd and Panorama, which would normally need these BIOS interfaces, they now can both load using this POC EFI loader. And um, again, we've got a replacement for the VGA interface, bvhvga.dll, which is sort of the low-level um, VGA BIOS uh, support in the operating system. So replacing that with a new DLL, which is called bvhefi.dll, um, that replaces the necessity for this direct access to the VGI har VGA hardware. And so now it provides the same interface to the operating system that bvhvga.dll used to. So with that replacement in place, the rest of the operating system is happy, can keep going on, and can keep using its existing interfaces, not knowing that it's not talking to a real BIOS anymore. It's talking through this bvhefi.dll to the, uh, what the proof of concept is doing here. Now, booting the operating system is kind of a, a, a slightly different adventure. That involves actually unpacking the, the preload files uh, into essentially memory, I believe, and then uh, using UEFI disk services um, to get that loaded by the, the next stage loader. And then the operating system continues booting. I believe in concept it's similar, not the same, but similar in concept uh, to kind of how, how memdisk would work uh, in the current Arca OS, where you know, it unpacks the files into a memory disk and then tells uh, the OS loader uh, that that is the boot disk. Um, so next slide, please. So uh, what works in this POC? Well, as I say, preloading the OS2 system files via UEFI disk services before Arc OS boots no longer requires this IN13 interface. Um, we can boot up. We boot. You see the text mode boot messages. You see the, the boot logo, um, the driver messages, everything. All that works. You've got full screen and OS2 text sessions. They work. You've got PM shell. It loads. You get that beautiful blue screen and the mouse cursor and everything. Dive support works. All of that just works. Um, it's actually quite remarkable. Uh, a few months ago when we started this work, I mean, I was thinking, well, this is going to take uh, uh, a long time. and It's probably going to involve a lot of kind of um, weird transition phases. Um, <coughs> 
<laughs> before we actually see something. No, in, in a few short months, we've actually managed to get it. So we've got all the way up to PM Shell. And PM Shell doesn't know. The operating system doesn't know that it's booting off a BIOSless system. It thinks everything it needs is still there. So the fact that it works this seamlessly is really nice. Uh, next slide. So here we see this is uh, PM Shell booted on uh, pure UEFI. And I can't pretend to tell you what this says because I can't read it, but it's not particularly important. <laughs> this is uh, Sysbench anyway. Um, and then there's the log at the top. You probably can't read it, but that's the panorama log file. And it's telling, it's reporting what it thinks is the VGA BIOS uh, or the Visa BIOS. And this is not actually the re a real hardware uh, hosted BIOS. It's essentially the simulated BIOS that UEFI loader is creating. And if you look at the BIOS OEM vendor name, it says AOS, Arc OS. So, and the OEM product name is UEFI boot. And so Panorama thinks it's loading, uh, it's running on a standard um, Visa BIOS, but it's actually the magic uh, layer that uh, our UEFI loader has put in there. And it's, it, just, it just works. So um, I think it's pretty impressive. And, and I can say that because I'm not the person who did this. Well, I'm sure the person who did this thinks it's impressive too, but that's, uh, that's a separate story. Um, all right, can we see the next slide, please? So um, potential future of this uh, UEFI uh, system. So as I say, again, this list is subject to change. This is a proof of concept. But the plan is, um, OK, loading the system files from a partition instead of having that sort of memory to memory disk uh, second stage. I believe that's next on the roadmap, or one of the next things on the roadmap. VDM support, and um, that's apparently one of the big things that remain, because um, DOS, uh, VDM being the DOS virtual, mach virtual DOS machine, this does normally require a certain um, um, interface to the BIOS, the VDM stuff. So that is going to have to require some more creative, um, I guess, shimming of the, the interfaces here. The DOS driver, vsvga.sys, which is, as I understand it, pretty much the key component of DOS uh, output display, uh, that normally accesses the VGA hardware directly. And with EFI, uh, UEFI, VGA hardware access is no longer available. So we're going to have to do something with vsvga.sys. Um, and so, so yeah, so VDM, DOS sessions, WinOS 2 sessions, they will be a bit later down the road. Uh, so they're not part of the current proof of concept. But given everything that uh, the developer has been able to accomplish up to now, I'm pretty optimistic that we'll, we should be able to, to find something, to find an approach that gets us to where we need. And uh, memory dump support. So if you wanted to do a, a trap dump, a uh, ring zero trap dump, that's a bit of a challenge because that, like the OS2 dump driver um, or system file uses BIOS in 13 uh, calls to write uh, the dump file to the hard disk. Because at that point, if the system's crashed, it doesn't trust the operating system drivers. So we're going to need to do something about the memory dump support. Again, uh, my understanding is the team has some ideas about how to do this, and it looks plausible. I don't know the technical details, but uh, again, I'm optimistic that this should be able to, uh, to happen. It just might not happen you know, in the short term. Um, next slide, please. OK, um, I, next I'm going to do a very brief demonstration. And remember, again, this is a proof of concept. But what this demonstration will show is that Arc OS can indeed boot on systems that are running in pure UEFI-only mode with no BIOS, no compatibility support module and that the major system components are, in fact, working. So I'm going to switch over the uh, projector here. OK, so here we have a ThinkPad, fairly not a current model, but a, a much more recent than I have model of ThinkPad, which has been kindly lent to us for this demonstration. And this is the, bi uh, well, the system setup. And because this is still a slightly a couple of years old system. It's still got the compatibility support module. You can turn UEFI support on or off here. Um, 
You can turn the CSM support on or off. So here you can see, and this is just to prove to you, that we have set this system to UEFI only. CSM is disabled, so there is no BIOS available. So uh, let's try. Now, I, we've inserted the USB stick. We're booting this off a USB stick, which is where we've got our uh, UEFI proof of concept on. So I've taken this USB stick, inserted it in the PC. I've turned off all of the compatibility legacy BIOS stuff. And now we're going to see if we can boot this to Arc OS off a UEFI only SM. system. OK, thanks. Uh, have you switched the camera over? Uh, yeah. OK, so um, this, this, this menu is provided by the UEFI proof of concept loader. So it's essentially. Um, we can go into various system information, sysview, power off, reboot, modify the loader settings. So I'm just going to do this one here, which is continue boot from zip file using the new B BVHEFI video module with the panorama video driver. And the zip basically means that it takes the UEFI files, unzips them onto memory disk. And we can actually select the resolution. And um, maybe you think 800 by 600 is good for the just take the highest one. The highest one, sure, okay. Um, so you can't really see what it's doing, but this is basically it. Basically, just unzipped a zip file to the memory disk, and now it's loading the OS2 files. And these are the OS2 driver messages that are loading, and it's it is booting off the UEFI system. And here we've got PM shell. And remember, I showed you, BIOS is completely turned off. This is pure UEFI. So we've got a uh, VO session. And I could even start FSCMD. I can even run a full screen session. Do we have, do, do we have any presentation manager apps on this? Um, maybe. EPM? E? No. OK, I guess we didn't put. Uh, like the text editor on here. But if you look, um, yeah, we've got basically a simple OS2 system on the drive. OS2 dump, OS2 kernel. We can't run a DOS or Windows 2 session at the moment. Um, sorry, I'm not totally familiar with everything that's on this stick. So I'm just trying to see what we can run. That's, oh, file commander. Yeah. We all know what File Commander looks like. <laughs> Actually, I don't because I don't use it. But <laughs> OK, graphical program, Theseus, why not? So yeah, we've got PM apps running. Um, there's not really much else to demonstrate. I mean, this is, you can see we've got a functional OS2 system here. Full screen works. VO sessions work. Presentation manager applications work. Uh, we are running in uh, high resolution. This is, I think this was 1600 by 1200 or something, uh, with panorama. That all works. And that's basically it. I mean, we've got a functioning OS2 system, Arc OS, booted off uh, a pure UEFI computer. So it works, ladies and gentlemen. And hopefully, this will be developed uh, to the point where it can show up in a future version of Arc OS. Um, that's basically it. So again, I'm not the person who actually developed this, as you can probably tell by some of my fumbling around. So I'm not totally clear on how some of the technical details work. Therefore, um, if you could go to the next slide, by the way. Um, please uh, go easy on me with the questions. But if you do have any questions, I'll see if I can answer them. I think it's a tremendous step forward. Yes. Yeah, so do I. Who is developing the system? Uh, we have uh, a developer under contract who's uh, working with us. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm authorized to say. This works with uh, Panorama? Will it it work? Yeah, this is Panorama. Will it work with Snap? 
Um, as far as I, I mean, there's, there's no accelerated drivers for it, but I mean, pa Snap essentially is, is basically just a generic Visa driver if you don't use the uh, accelerated drivers. So it's pretty much just a slightly slower panorama from my understanding. So I can imagine that you will need um, a wide range of hardware to test things. Um, yeah, we, we have some, some people who are basically running around plugging this into as many systems as they can. Um, I believe it's been tested on quite a number of different systems. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've heard any reports of a system that it actually doesn't work on, although I'm not totally sure about what has been done. But yeah. Um, More or less, it's hardware independent. Th I think that's the idea, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do we only have this on a stick? <laughs> I'm sorry? Do we only have it on a stick to pull That's it from? Um, the I only mean reason I'm asking this is because um, with more modern hardware, we have USB 3.0. Mm -hmm. And 3.0, unless there is in the uh, device support for 2.0, real hardware support for 2.0, you can't boot from a stick. Well, that will change once we have the USB 3 yeah, drive. Yeah, I mean, if we want to check the hardware now, we, I mean, I was given... If you want to check on the latest hardware, it has to be hardware with USB 2, which is a little bit... Poss yeah, that, that, that might be true. I don't know what other, I mean, I was provided with the, uh, the, the stick, you know, we, we have a set of image and instructions for creating the USB stick, but uh, I believe there are if not now, then under development um, procedures. Well, as I, as I noted on one of the earlier slides, we're, it, one of the next steps is to get this working right off the heart um, without having to unzip off the disk, on to, onto the stick onto memory. So.